Welcome to Amazon Legends, where we have real stories about making it big on Amazon. Our guests are CEOs of large companies and entrepreneurs who became power sellers. Also providers specializing in helping sellers, aggregators that acquire sellers, and former Amazonians will give us an insight from behind the scenes. Here is your host, Nick Urison. Welcome to another episode of Amazon Legends. My next guest today has been in e-commerce for over a decade, including handling the Vendor Central account. So this is usually for Amazon vendors, uh, but it's shrinking because Amazon wants more people to become sellers. But he has that Vendor Central account uh, management experience. Um, and he's currently the senior account director at My Amazon Guy, which is a full service Amazon agency. And when he is not working, uh, for those who are watching, you're going to find a lot of dinosaurs behind him. Uh, he is very much into collecting dinosaurs and also magically gathering card games. So, with that, everybody, meet my guest, Jason Master Matero. Hi, Jason. How are you? I'm doing well, Nick. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing good. So, um, we're going to have to learn about your uh, interest in dinosaurs a little bit later. Uh, <laughs> but for now, let's dive into something that you are doing very well right now on Amazon. So uh, I, something that we're doing very well on Amazon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, a lot of good things coming uh, out right now. But the main the big one recently has uh, been, you know, conversion improvements um main image testing that sort of thing so um conversion improvement is obviously it's, it's one of my favorite subjects because conversion is everything you know, that's how you get ranked and everything so what you do to improve conversion uh let's get into that so let's dissect that subject uh walk us through how you give us the outline first, what are areas, and then we can dig into it individually. Um, well, mobile versus desktop, that's a big one. Um, and main image, obviously, uh, pricing techniques, and then going into the other creative uh, at a limited scale as far as like um, how much it can or can affect uh, A plus content secondary image stack, brand store, layout, that sort of stuff. Okay. So great. So we'll we'll cover as many of these as possible uh, during this episode. So let's start with the first one you mentioned, mobile versus desktop. So let's discuss that. Gear, share with us your approach. So, I mean, we have the metrics now uh via the 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 business reports where amazon is telling us how much of our traffic is mobile traffic and how much of it is desktop and it's product dependent if you're selling something that's you know uh you know a business to business or industrial it's going to be more desktop purchase if you're selling more consumer products you're going to see your mobile traffic is um a lot higher than your desktop traffic because people are buying on their phones and their ipads and stuff like that and the important thing here is make sure uh, especially a lot of the you're building your listings on a computer you're seeing how they look on a computer and a lot of people ignore or don't look at their products on a mobile device or and you need to make sure it looks nice <laughs> Mobile is hard, right? Because it's smaller space. There, there's a lot of times where you you see your product on the website. You're like, oh, it looks great. You check it on mobile, and sometimes I'll I'll just be like, I can't even tell what it is. You know, like that's bad, right? If you can't tell what it is, they're not going to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, well, actually, let's back up. On mobile, you have the search results that are, you know, search results are presented totally different on the computer, on the desktop versus mobile. Mobile is always a single column. 
So you ju it just goes like a toilet roll. You keep scrolling. In fact, when you get to the bottom, you wait a little bit, it, it expands even further. So you just keep going. So, but when you are scrolling through, you have the picture, you have the title, you have the whatever information is relevant there. It's there, but it's cramped into a smaller space. And then when you click on it, now you go to the, what on the mobile, what would be the product detail page. It's a bigger uh, picture, but the variations, if there are variations, they also behave different. So yep. uh, give, share with us some of the, the tips uh, on how to make this work better. Well, that's a that's a big one um uh, again for mobile is don't bloat your parentage um if there's too many variations there it's it's taxing on the on the customer to make a selection and you end up losing uh conversion there um this isn't true for every product type a uh, good example is shoes obviously you're going to have different color sizes that sort of thing um but you want to make sure if you do have a selection that you're out of stock in, that that listing is inactive. So it's not showing a blank in the parentage, making it even harder for the customer to make a decision. So that's another reason why you never want to be out of stock because the listing looks terrible in mobile. <laughs> <laughs> never I never thought about stock. this. <laughs> it's uh, because there are, I mean, obviously when you run out of stock, your sales stop, you lose ranking and, and, and all that stuff. But now you introduce one more thing to consider. The mobile looks terrible. And if you are in a consumer category, most of your business uh, is coming from mobile. Yep. Uh, there's, there's, there's other considerations. I mean, Amazon's always testing ways. Um, that certain your know, categories are being displayed on mobile and desktop. There's new tests all the time. Um, mobile, you could in one category go from the main image and it doesn't even show the bullets or the description or anything like that. It just goes straight to the secondary images and then straight to the A plus content and then the bullets, right? So the, the you know you have to take that into consideration uh, when you're uh, when you're building out your content for your your product detail page. Yeah. Um, so, so you're talking about the layout of the product detail page in mobile. So the first thing is right at the top. Once you click on it, uh, you you have the product image, and then underneath you have the. Uh, I forget where the title appears, but the I titles remember... the title is tiny. It's at the top. It's little yeah. little itty bitty always, and that's yeah. why the main image is so important. The title is secondary the bullets are for the bots <laughs> yeah tight title yes you're right title is small and then uh, bullets are pushed right to the bottom of the content. in some categories there's other there's certain categories where um i know like for i'm pretty sure for automotive the bullets are right there under the main image um but yeah they're they switch switch it around i mean even on on desktop now in some um clothing categories the uh, secondary images are scrollable. You can go over them and scroll down instead of having to click them. Okay. And so this is the, uh, so basically the idea is for the, for sellers to view your listing in mobile and then make sure that it looks right. And if it doesn't, they have to, clean up their images, or share with us some recommendations, how to make sure that mobile is also converting as high as the desktop version. So a lot of, a lot of times there's, there's two views in your A plus content when you're creating that. Um, there's a, it shows you a mobile view and a desktop view. A lot of times uh, people don't look at the mobile view and something that looks very good on a desktop could be jacked up on the on the mobile um maybe an image size or something like that or the where where the text is and um you go to your listing and it's one of the listings where after the images it goes straight to the a plus content and something's cut off or the text is all messed up 
that's not appealing, right? <clears throat> yeah, so um, you, you visually have to look at it and see how it is and then make the changes. And do you do you have any data in terms of conversion rates, mobile versus desktop? Oh, uh, I mean, it's going to be category product uh, dependent, brand dependent. Um, I mean, there's no there's no hard number. Um, that is something oh. that we're trying to track at an agency level with all the brands, um, but I don't have that data yet. In terms of as a comparison, like, um, is can you say that conversion? is 10% more on mobile or 20% more or yeah in other words where is it easier to convert is it easier to convert on mobile or desktop do you think again it's going to be product dependent um but your chances at more conversion is going to be where you're getting more sessions. So if you're 80% mobile, then, I mean, if you're just looking at conversion, at that point, I've, I'm, I'm not looking at conversion necessarily. I'm looking at total orders on mobile and total orders on you know desktop for a certain period of time, and then comparing the two as far as a conversion standpoint goes. But um, again, this is super product dependent. If you're, if you're selling, printer ink uh, for industrial printers, then, you know, all your desktop conversion is going to be what you want to be um, looking at, right? If you're selling, you know, yo-yos, um, then you're going to be looking at your mobile. You always go for the stronger, um, the stronger one. Yeah. 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 I mean, because that's where the audience is ultimately. Exactly. Okay. So um, let's move on to another element of uh, conversion. So other than the, what's the next important thing? Um, so we talked about that then. So, uh, I mean, the, the most important thing is your main image. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's discuss some things that will make the main image better to improve your conversion rates. So, I mean, still within the terms of service and most of most of um, ca the categories is Amazon wants that on a white background. You're not allowed to have any other elements. It needs to be just a picture of the product. But that just isn't true anymore. If you search any product on Amazon, um, you'll see, you know, dogs in the picture. You'll see little flowers next to the product. You'll see, um, you know, uh, oftentimes graphics and and text overlays, depending on the category. Anything in the home goods uh, category is staged. They don't you don't see just a plain white mattress. If you search mattresses, you see a beautiful staged bedroom. Same thing for, you know, uh, curtains, pillowcases, uh, any kind of wall art. Right. All against terms service technically for the main image. But uh, if you're just doing a plain white image and not adding any um, elements that will help convert it, you're doing yourself a disservice. This comes a lot with um, using models uh, in, in your photography or any kind of pet product. If you have a cute puppy there, or cute little kitty there, it's going to convert better than just having a picture of your pet food, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I want to hear your take on something I always advocate for when I work with uh, sellers. It's called image theme. Are you familiar with that? Image theme? Yeah. Um, I mean, not maybe i know it is something different but i, I mean yeah interested. so what i always <laughs> say is there uh, come up with something that is the representative of your product line uh, your company and then turn that into like a, i don't want to say icon but like a small thing that you can make part of your uh, all your images different maybe different versions of it uh, but that kind of governs the concept. It's it's that's why it's it's I call it the image theme. So the theme of your product lines is is displayed there. Now, when you do that, and then you do a good job incorporating that into your main image, 
that automatically stands out in the search results. So that is something that I advocate for. Some examples, uh, like I have, uh, I have a client. They sell cooking kits, but the cooking kits are country specific. It's for kids. So in the kit, there's all kinds of different things. It's not just. Uh, first of all, it doesn't include fresh. Uh, uh, groceries or anything like that. It's just the um, the, the uh, recipe and certain uh, special sauces and spices and things like that. And then there's all kinds of activities around making that thing. So it's, it's for kids, like you play with and, and at the same time cook. It's a family experience kind of thing. So uh, and it's all about different countries. So what we came up with as a, uh, an image team is we put the, the map of the country, very small, in the corner with some elements. Like, let's say, take France. You put the Eiffel Tower on it. And then you have a, a magnifying glass over it. So now as they change the country, or the continent, whichever the case may be, you have the map of those, you know, landmarks so, and, the, and the landmarks together with a magnifying glass. So now that becomes the theme, and then it carries through all the other images. So that's an example of an image theme. Uh, what and it's all compliant with TOS, so Amazon does not uh, mind that. And at the same time, it makes the image stand out, the main image stand out in the search results. What do you think about using something like that? Yeah, so we call that brand profile here. Um, and uh, basically, it's part of our onboarding process um, and getting the correct um, brand theming that the client uh, may provide or a lot of times they don't have any idea of what they're looking for so we create one um and yeah it's uh synchronized through the entire image stack as well as into the a plus content and the brand store so that everything has um a uh a theme that uh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that works <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's a it's a great idea. I had another client a long time ago. It was a supplements, so um, it, they had not only the bottle, but around the bottle they had those little grapes and uh, apple and cherries or whatever. So, so it's a great way to differentiate yourself from the others. And so, you know, one thing that I want to also uh, see what you think about is is the main image as important on the product detail page as it is on the search results page? That's an interesting question, huh? Uh, I would say no, it's more important on the search page because it's what's gonna get the click. Yeah. So equally, is the title as important on the product detail page as it is in the search itself. I don't think no, so it's the opposite on this one. The 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 search result title. Most people don't read the titles. <laughs> in search results? Yeah, they look at the picture. I'm going to Amazon. I want um a shark puppet. Yeah. And I see a shark puppet. I'm clicking on it. Maybe I'll look at the price. I don't care that it's, you know, a shark puppet made in Italy, uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, like um, I might read the title or I will read the title once I hit the product detail page, most likely. And then am I going to read the bullets all about this shark puppet? No, I'm just going to buy a shark puppet. <laughs> now, yeah. if you're selling an expensive stereo or something, that purchase is going to be different. But what what's the what's the 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 average price point of a product on Amazon, Nick? Thirty eight dollars. That's that's good. Yeah, I I think I thought it was like around thirty four, but it's it's um, it's something where, I mean, we know Amazon buyers go to Amazon to buy, so 
I need chapstick. I'm going to type in chapstick. I'm going to click on whichever one looks appealing. Or if I'm loyal to chapstick brand, then I'm going to find chapstick brand, find the flavor I like and buy it, right? Um, so the title, in my opinion, is not as important on the search than it is on the um, on the product detail page. Okay, so I'll share this experience, my own experience. And this is this does not have any like specific, it's just what I did. So I was looking to buy, and you know, I've been around Amazon a long time. I've been an Amazon seller. I there is not much that I have not seen on, on Amazon. So I know what works in terms of what's important. So um, so I was looking for a a deep fryer. So I bought one and then I had to return it because it was terrible. It stunk up the place. <laughs> so, so what happens is I thought, okay, I'm going to go search different one. And I put the search term orderless fry. Guess what? I was reading every single title. And guess what? Most of them did not have orderless. But they obviously were coming up, they were indexed or, you know, they were bidding on it and therefore they ranked or whatever. But they did not have it orderless in the title. And guess what happened? There was one that was orderless in the title. I bought it. And of course, you know, they have this thing that has yeah. a filter. So I mean, it maybe it's an anomaly, but this what do you this think is about that? This, that's a different type of shopping experience, though. You 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 got burned by a, a a technical product that you were looking for a specific use case for. So the title is important if I'm looking for a rear view mirror for a 1992 Honda Civic, right? Right. Because that could I can't tell the picture by the picture if that's the right mirror. I need to get the exact specifications. But if I'm just buying towels or something like that or uh, whatever, I'm looking at the images before I'm looking at the title. You're always looking at the images before the title. And the reality of the the you know world we live in right now is it's the TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest world where where video and images are king and text is not. Um how about because I, what you said is something I've heard for the first time. On the search results, title is not as important as the picture. Now I know, uh, or title is not important for convert for conversion. For conversion, title is very important for for indexing and keywords and all that good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. So um, w one of the things that I advocate <clears throat> for uh, is this, as you know. One of the ways to increase your conversion is to make sure that irrelevant traffic does not come to your product detail page. So therefore, it's important for the right kind of shopper to say, oh, that's me. So therefore, they list, they click the listing or the wrong kind of shopper says, well, that's not for me. So they don't click it. So uh, going on that premise, I advocate that putting some of your uh, keywords that describe your audience in the title is going to be valuable because when they see i for example uh, i have a client they sell masks and the masks they sell are uh, is for woodworkers so therefore saying that um, uh, dust mask for woodworkers in the title that's going to help the shopper to more shoppers to click on it if they happen to be woodworkers so therefore yeah. it's that that's that's my uh that's my point of it i i agree there and again like anything amazon this is going to be product specific um that's targeting that particular product product is targeting a specific audience another example where i agree with you with the title um is important is you know something like uh for kids ages six to twelve or something like that right right um that's for you know grandma or auntie that's just trying to find a gift for little johnny's birthday right 
Um, so that's important. They don't maybe know what the image of the product is, but they go, oh, this is for your kids age six to 12. So that'll be perfect for him, right? Um, it's going to be product dependent. Another thing you have to look at, Nick, and you've probably noticed here is in a lot of categories, Amazon is starting to cut down on the keyword stuffing in titles. They're cutting down the number of characters that you can put into um, yeah. your title. They don't like the uh, office chair brown, brown office chair with back support, back support office chair. They're getting sick of that, right? They want it to be streamlined. They want it to look good. Brand name, product name, maybe a little descriptor. So we're going to be coming to an age pretty soon. There's already some categories where the title limit is 50 characters. So um, pretty soon, we're, we'll be we able to change my mind on a lot of things on this. Um, but when we do like A-B title tests and stuff like that, a lot of times the shorter titles win out. Um, you know, less than 50 characters compared to a full, you know, 200 character, 250 character title. Mm. So I know that mobile has 95 characters, right? That's the other, that's the other thing. You may have put that identifier in there. Sometimes that gets cut off. And remember, we talked about beginning in the in the podcast here, the mobile title is so tiny. It's Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you can't see. So uh, yeah, I mean, title is title is tough. So as far as indexing, though, title is your friend, right? You want to put stuff there so that you get indexed. So how do you balance that? How do you balance, you know, what having a short title versus having a title that will have the most indexing? On a brand new product, on brand new product launches, if the brand doesn't have brand much brand search. Um, then you you optimize the title fully. Use use every character you can to um, launch that product. Once a product gets into a, a a legacy phase or there's a lot of brand search, that's when you start A/B a -B testing those shorter titles, and you'll see conversion go up from the longer title. Will you lose some indexing or anything like that? Not if your sales velocity and and your um your your trip your search trends are continuing to go up because of you know the increased conversion and um as long as you're obviously you know uh, continuing to push your your market share via ppc or dsp or whatever you're using yeah the, um, i have another question for you you know they say that a, a good way to create your title is your brand first you start with your brand and then you say what it is and then if you want to use canonical URL, then it's those five first five words are key. And then you have to put a space dash space. So that's the right way to do it. And, and one of those five words at the beginning, um, you should start with your brand. So my question to you is, if your brand is not a well-known brand, you're just launching it. Nobody knows your brand. Why is it that you have to start with your brand? Can you just use something else and then create your canonical URL? And then afterwards, once you get some visibility for the brand, uh, add that on. What do you think about that? So I, I don't know the exact count, but there's a lot of categories where it's required to have the brand name in front. Um, so if you upload the product or change it in the back end so the brand name isn't there anymore, Amazon will just automatically add it to the front. Um, uh, in the categories where where that's not uh, a requirement, 100%, we're, we have, we're in uh, Stevens accounts and gifts and, and giftables and stuff like that. And that's not always required on some of the subcategories there. And the exact match, um, highest search volume, high, highest relevant phrase uh, that we we can find for that product goes in the front. So um, whatever you know that would be a uh, tumbler glass for uh, bride maid or something like that, right? Um, but uh, to answer the other part of your question, this is why your brand name is so important. Shorter brand names do better. Um, on Amazon, uh, if you're a new, if you're making a new brand, if you, you new trademark, new brand, don't make some long brand name um, that is going to take up your canonical URL. 
and also confuse the customer because you've got this long brand name they've never heard of and they just want to get to this part of the title yeah i mean look brands always they need to be catchy right so they need to be short catchy they need to it should be easy to pronounce also you know already we have multiple languages spoken in the country so it should be easy enough uh what i'm hearing from you is if your your brand is a new brand it's not really worth your while to put it in the title instead use the high value high volume search terms as long as it's not required by the category yeah yeah and again there's there there's a lot of categories that automatically just put it right in front so um as and a requirement you know, if, if, when you're creating the asin because this is a one shot deal right so when you're creating the asin if you've done it the right way it will become your canonical url but you you can take it to change your canonical url we've done it before yeah how do you do it you change your title and then um you take a support and tell them that it's not matching the canonical euro um and then if it's not already taken they'll they'll adjust it for you oh so how do you explain there are a lot of listings where the title is not matching the canonical url is yeah. that because i mean obviously if they haven't respected that rule of five words it's not going to match so amazon is going to pick up its own thing uh, but if it does match yeah uh, why do you think that happens amazon ch changes the url so they'll either uh they either had it that way before and then they changed their title or or uh like you said amazon kind of just gave them a longer one i've seen canonical urls that have that go to like eight character eight um phrases Words. yeah really? yeah so it depends on again if there's somebody already in that url um say it was one that you know that doesn't include brand name like i just said earlier like tumblr glass for bridesmaids somebody already has that then amazon's going to add another thing or they're going to just sw swip swap things uh, or oftentimes don't even give you a canonical url and you have to ticket for one so yeah 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 okay so okay so having a, a good main image is the most important thing in your search results bottom line and that will increase your click through rate so that now people are on your product detail page so when they are on the product detail page main image is not as important so at that point let's move on to the rest of the stuff so uh, in your experience what do you think a typical shopper is looking at when they are on the product detail page right after you get the click and they're on the main image the reason why um i mean the next step is that secondary image and that secondary image that second image in your image stack better be the experience of your product and the shopper being able to put themselves in, uh, in use of the product or what have you and that's a lifestyle image so if you're selling um a, a pillow that better be somebody comfortably uh, uh, sleeping on your pillow and maybe some text that says, you know, uh, the soft uh, touch of whatever, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, lifestyle imagery is very, very important. Um, again, you want to get the sale, uh, get them to experience a product as best they can. Um, if you're selling something that and then you're going to go down the the rest of the image stack the, the shopper is or the customer oftentimes um you know they may not even go down the full image stack they'll look and you know then you can get <laughs> i don't know i'm a i'm a weird shopper i i see what i want and i literally just click the one click buy thing <laughs> you don't have any patience <laughs> I have no patience to look at read bullets or anything like that. It, it's Amazon. If I don't like the product, I can just return it. Like, <laughs> hello, that's changing. You heard the news, right? Huh? You heard the news. That's changing now. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know it's changing. They say it's changing, but we'll see. Yeah, if they're gonna charge. This the returns are not gonna be so easy anymore. Well, I mean, they are. They are saying that they're gonna charge a dollar. 
okay fine that's better that me paying a dollar to return something uh, uh, or try and read something for two minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's it's yeah i i guess they are i, I can see their return fee going up slowly so they are introducing it as a concept because right so far it's been free return and nobody cares so oh, I can return it but now they're introducing the concept of paying for a return and then once that concept is established then say oh you know it's now it's two dollars fifty by the way when you go to 250 from one it's hundred and fifty percent increase <laughs> but it's, nobody cares <laughs> it, it's just like that that uh that gas surcharge they started charging FBA uh, in in March of 2021, and then they told uh, when the new terms came out this year, they said they're removing it, but it got added into the total <laughs> into the total fees. It did uh, have as a line item. Yeah, it, no, they removed it as a gas surcharge, but they said it will be added in addition to the to the oh, FBA okay. fees. <laughs> Well, you know, there is there are so many things. Uh, it's, for example, um, <clears throat> once something becomes mainstream, people will pay the extra. They don't question it anymore. So uh, I, that's what they are doing. So they're now introducing a charge for returning. But the, the, the behavioral change is going from paying nothing to paying something. However... To make that behavioral change, they're saying, "Oh, it's only a dollar." Yeah. So you know what? <laughs> saying, okay, we have to change, but it's only a dollar. No big deal. Like you just said, why? Well, you know, instead of spending two minutes reading the bullet, I just pay the dollar. Okay. Well, guess what? Now that behavior is is broken. Now the next thing is increase. Well, increase. Well, you're already paying for it. So what are you gonna do? You. This is already part of the uh, the business. So it's everything is all, it's the old story of, you know, you drop a, a mouse into a boiling pot of water, the mouse will jump right out. But you drop the, the mouse into this lukewarm water in this pot and turn the heat on, slowly the, the mouse will boil with the water. Poor mouse. Yeah. <laughs> So um, that's that's uh, how it is. Okay. So one thing I picked up, Jason, there's something you said is the second image after the main image has to be the lifestyle because you want to show the shopper the picture where they see themselves in the picture using it. Right. That's so. That's such an important concept. That, that I say, um, I don't think that people actually follow that because they are showing features and benefits in the pictures. You can still have a lifestyle and and show some benefits, like I mentioned, or a feature or one call to action. Um, and this is this is true for most products. Now, if you're selling uh, technical products, let's just say you're selling um, different sized screws or something like that. Um, you know, then you want to go technical on that second image and show um, the exact measurements or what have you, you know, but most products, lifestyle image, uh, second, and even sometimes go third. If you need to put some sort of infographic uh, in there, the, then you're going to go into the the fourth and, uh, and fifth images there. Um, you need to really sell the product in those first three images um, for most products. Mm -hmm. and. Let's talk about the infographic. So what is a good way to compile the what goes into your infographic? What are you putting in there? The most important thing is you can't you cannot put too much stuff on there. Um, it needs to be short, sweet, uh, extend to the product uh, exactly what it, it its best features are or or you know what it does and three to four bullets, very legible text. Again, remember some people are, are, are reading this on their phone. Um, don't use 
uh, violating colors against each other. I see this all the time. I'll see like yellow background and white text or something like that. And you can't even, oh my yeah, yeah. Uh, like, what do they think? You can't read the thing. Um, so obviously make it look nice, <laughs> but, um, yeah, most of our infographics are, are combinations. So it's not a straight up, you know, bullet point sheet or whatever. It's oftentimes an additional lifestyle image or a different angle of the product with that in the background with the uh, features, right? Um, and that's where you really uh, can show, uh, can finish, close the deal, I guess is the right word. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, uh, the, the common mistake, I see it all the time. And you know who makes these mistakes? Graphic designers. They use dark colors over dark colors. Yep. Like, for example, uh, they they put buttons or something like look like buttons, like say um, blue, like darkish blue, and over it they have black letters. I mean, dark black letters over dark blue. Nobody's gonna be able to see it. And equally, they have yellow white combination. I mean, it makes no sense. And designers make these mistakes. You cheapest see person, the yourself? cheapest person on Fiverr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, unfortunately, everybody is a designer these days because anybody who can just cut and paste and crop images and. Yeah, I mean, you it. can you. I don't know if you ever use Canva, but I mean, I've made some some infographics on the fly. Uh, Sometimes, you know, and it does a pretty good job. You don't have to, it's not professional, like our professional designers here, but um, if I need a quick fix for something, then it works. Yeah, Canva is great, especially for, especially for putting your thoughts uh, on exactly. the screen so that you can see, because as you know, what you envision does not always come out the way you envision it when you start designing. That's really that's really funny to bring that up because oftentimes that's what I'll do is I'll mock something up for my designer. I was like, okay, I need you to make it look like this, but not like this. Make it look professional. <laughs> yeah, not, well, I mean, I'm sure he understands what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's a lot easier than me typing everything out and going, okay, I want this. Oh my uh, God, you know, typing, like <laughs> there's no way, there's no way. You know, you know, one thing that we do is to communicate, especially for designers. I just start recording. So even without yeah. having to mock up, I just go pull up. So I, I kind of choreographed before. So I pull up all the websites or uh, images here and there. And then I just start recording. Take this here and put it here and then take this here. That way, you know, it, it saves the time typing stuff. I, I do video for a lot of communication. Um, it's just a lot easier and there's less questions asked uh say via an email or something like that this could be even something as quick as you know a client calling me or emailing me oh hey um oh, we have a return or something like that what happened and i could just go on loom for 30 seconds and be like oh don't worry we took care of it this is what happened instead of having to type up an email you know yeah yeah it's, it's true the um okay so Tell me about something that I also do. So for the images, uh, building your image stack, typically what I always recommend is storyboard your images first. It's almost like writing a, the script for a movie. So you say, this is what I want. This is how I want it. So in other words, before you go to designers and telling them, just storyboard the whole thing. What do you want on the first one, the second one, the third one, fourth, fifth, whatever. And then what you envision to be uh, in image three and image four. So creating that storyboarding is the first step. So uh, what do you think about that? And, and what is your methodology? Yeah, I mean, we have, we have thousands of templates now uh, based on what we know converts better just from historical uh, working in different categories. There's a template for almost every category now um, and product, uh, you know, uh, sub not subcategories, that's too many, but, uh, <laughs> um, and then we'll have like, uh, you know, like for, for, for example, for uh, supplements, I think we have like six different 
uh, templates for that, depending on what type of supplement it is. Uh, if it's a vitamin, if it's a, um, if it's a gummy, if it's a, uh, um, you know, a powder, different things like that. Uh, and we've kind of fleshed that out. We create new templates all the time. The, the best way again, for, for you to see what's converting better is type in your keywords, not your brand keywords, type in your keywords, your top search keywords, uh, or uh, the top search in the category for your product. That's highly relevant. And see what your competition's doing. If you're selling vitamin C powder and your picture is just of the bottle and you're scrolling down, you see everybody has a little powder pile in front of their bottle. You're doing it wrong. They've done the testing for you and you better get a picture with some powder in front of it to convert better, right? Uh, another thing I always see, especially in supplements, uh, is, is um, a bunch of bottles, right? And they're all white with some sort of colored label or maybe no colored label. And the ones that are doing better, um, taking away uh, just conversion wise um, and click wise are the ones that are bright. So if your color is purple and it's this dull purple on your bottle and you're not a well-known brand, you're going to do worse. It doesn't look appealing. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll actually turn the contrast up on those colors to get them to convert better. Even though the packaging doesn't exactly look like that, if you tweak it a little bit to just get that little neon kind of uh, call out to it, people will buy it. Never had a you know complaint saying, oh, the purple, it doesn't look the same as it does on Amazon. Cause that could be an image thing, right? Yeah. 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 And then of course they'll end up returning it. So no, uh, I mean, like I said, it, it's a slight, it's a slight um, contrast change to, to make the, the listing pop out a little bit. You know, I was just thinking something, this new change in asking people to pay for if they want to return something is likely to put more pressure on sellers to make their product pictures even more representative of what the product is what do you think i mean if you're not doing that already you're you're behind you know the game um well i mean it it, it you may be but like for example you may have a, a, the bottle may be dark purple it may have a dark purple label but to make it look better on amazon you may just with adobe photoshop you can change the color a little bit it it's it's not it's uh what i'm discussing here is not a change that you probably wouldn't even notice if you're holding the bottle in your hand and looking at the picture it's a slight contrast change we're not turning the the contrast all the way up you know <laughs> 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 it's a slight contrast change to okay. to to make it um sharper so it's kind almost of. like the sunlight uh, effect kind exactly of i see i see okay um okay. but it works and you see a yeah. lot of things in, in liquid supplements um you know you'll you'll see um the actual uh, eyedropper with the the liquid and it's got a nice little thing um the, the all these main images they're there for a reason um, if you see all your competitors doing it. Um, again, they've done the testing for you. Yeah. you How about you... the idea? So I, I had another guest and he was talking about uh, dif differentiating yourself in the search results. So in order for uh, you to increase your click-through rate, you have to differentiate yourself in the search results. And one of the things that he said was you want your main picture to stand out. Yeah. So one of the ways to stand it out is use different colors. So that now contradicts directly with uh, using the same kind of color scheme that competitors are using. So which one is the better way to go? You, you don't you you don't want to. This is this is a product packaging um, a manufacturer question that you're asking when you're doing your branding and your brand name and all that stuff. So you got to do your research before. Uh, if you put in coconut shampoo in uh, in Amazon, you're going to see a bunch of white bottles, uh, and then you know you've got a couple here that are in um, 
and green and, and brown. So what else uh, can you do to make yourself stand out if you're stuck with a white bottle is you see some of these brands, they've got coconuts next to them with you know pretty coconut leaves and maybe some vanilla flowers and stuff like that. And that's what I'm trying to say. That's how you make yourself stand out if you're already past the manufacturing, you you know, most brands that's already decided you're not coming out of the scratch you can always change your product packaging but that's an expensive endeavor and usually especially if you're changing the colors and stuff like that uh, and it might actually hurt your brand if you change your color packaging after you've gotten a you know, a base of people that are coming back especially if it's a consumable so yeah. what if you are not uh you are creating for the first time and you check out the competition. Everybody has that white bottle uh, and you want to stand out. So what do you do? I'm making you a blue want... bottle or, or something like that. <laughs> so you would want to make it different than. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I see. So then how uh, that means it's not. So how does that agree with what you said earlier? I'm not. I just want to get a much better uh, clarification. So uh, if everybody has... has I'm not... Uh, I, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. I'm not saying be like your competitor and copy their packaging. I'm saying look at what they're doing. If they have coconuts that aren't part of their packaging in their picture, then you, got, you better start doing something like that too. If they have a model in their picture and you don't have a model and everyone else does, you better get a model in your main image. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not I saying see. don't be unique. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, because, uh, you know, it, it, this is an important way to stand out. And I always say this to people. I say, look, people don't read instructions. They don't read warnings or bullet or, points. They just respond to, we respond to colors. Yeah. There is a reason why traffic lights are in three colors. <laughs> And, and it says walk or stop uh, over it, not on the, on its own. So uh, we always, and you know, when you color code something, you can see things much better. So uh, colors are the ones that will get you the results. So that means that you have to look at your competition and you want to stand out, you pick a different color if you have that luxury. Otherwise, you have to pick something around the, what I call the image theme, I guess. So you have to wrap your product around some kind of an image theme. Yeah, so I mean, way. if if this is really in the, the research phase, I mean, I'm getting a graphic designer to make probably 10 to 15 different color options that I'm choosing, and then I'm going to pick through and, and A-B testing all of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, let's quickly mention that pick through is a service where you can create your own poll, where you ask people. First of all, let me back up. Um, you decide who your audience is, yeah. and then you can select how many people. They, I mean, the costs are very small costs, but very valuable information. You can say, I want 100, you know, this kind of people. You list the demographics. They'll immediately compile that audience for you. And then you have to create your questions. And you put two options and say, which one? Now, I tried this. And what happened was I hit, I hit a client and I said, look, try PickFoo. And then the, the following day, the guy says, okay, I got the results. And this one is better. So we we're looking to pick the main product uh, image. And so I said, okay, let me see the, the, the questions. The way he asked the question dictated the answer. <laughs> you... You you have you have to ask an a, a you know a neutral a, a question short. Literally the the best way if it's an a, a main image A B test is just which one is better, you know, um, or which one looks better, or which one would be better for your whatever demographic you pick or what have you. If you start leading, what did he do? Uh, <laughs> did he say like? <laughs> The left yeah. one is our favorite one, uh, but we were thinking about switching to the right <laughs> one. What do you guys think? <laughs> well, uh, you know, the mistake actually uh, was this. So we were looking to decide which picture would be best to make the purchase on the product detail page. 
But what happened was that wasn't clear. So he just put the picture and said, which one would you click? <laughs> so now everybody took that as the question about which one to, they, you, they would click in the search results. So, and of course, you can't tell from the answers they are giving. This is what they were thinking. Uh, so, but uh, thankfully, one of them, uh, one or two people said, I would definitely click this to find out more about the product. Then I said, wait a minute. They thought this was going to be the search results page. But what we are looking for is the buying decision. Yeah. So as soon as we changed the, the question, uh, then the answers were different. So uh, you better know which question to ask. So <laughs> images are so important. I mean, I, I, you are telling me that, and I totally agree with you, images will sell the item. And those first three are key once they land on the product detail page. So let's quickly cover the A+. And then tell us about your take on uh, the premium A+, a little bit. I mean, we we could talk about this all day long, but um, it's uh, there's some there's some A B tests we've been seeing where the the regular A plus does win significantly uh, over the premium, but uh, again, dependent on category, and it could be a design thing. Um, it be, could be because there's video in there. Uh, you know, not really sure, premium, but uh, premium premium wins or regular wins. Regular, regular wins over premium. I've seen it. I've seen it like seven or eight times now. Yeah. Wow. And <laughs> even though there is video in premium, they still go for the regular. I've seen the. I've seen the opposite too. But that's what's most shocking to me is I'm seeing, you know, that many that got uh, A/B tested and the regular one uh, significantly. You know. So. so the lesson is: don't think that. Premium is going to get you the best results. Yeah. Oh, well, all, the lesson is always be testing. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. And now with Amazon's experiments, you can always be testing all the time, right? I know. Finally, right? You don't have to wait anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, Jason, do you know if you can do A B testing on the A plus by switching between premium and regular? Yeah, that's how I, that's how I got the 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 results well, that's how i got the oh okay well that's that's very interesting i'd be interested to play with that and see what happens try it out all right well cool well as you know the conversion discussion never ends <laughs> we can't keep going about this so uh but enough business so let's get to know you a little bit so first tell me about the dinosaur story I'm dying to hear where that came from. Oh, I so I just been collecting stuff. Uh, you know, I used to, I still do, not as much, but I just go to garage sales and buy stuff that I liked when I was a kid, and uh, put it behind me. But Although those where, dinosaurs are are are, are recent um, uh, releases. <laughs> so you still you still continue like as passionate as before. Yeah, I mean, this is just a small. My entire garage is all. Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers. Uh. <laughs> so, uh, so do you? Do you? So, do you know? Do you like catalog them and everything, or do you have? Do you know exactly? No, no, not really. So, once you get it, what do you do after? You just, you know, you just. Keep I have it like this. I have like these like display type shelves, and and just put them in there. That's it. Know. So tell us, uh, where did your interest for this kind of stuff? The, yeah, first, tell us, where did you grow up? You know, share your childhood experience with us a little bit. I grew up in uh, Southern California. And... You're a California lifestyle person. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, and where did the, so were you always interested in uh, numbers and selling and things like that? I hate numbers. <laughs> you work with numbers I, I, I'm not a math person. I like growing. I like to see numbers grow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's it's part of your day-to-day -day work, no? 
not with all the tools you have today. It's not like I'm sitting here with an abacus, like counting things or, you know, um, yeah. it's more about psychology, actually. Um, if you think so about it, marketing, marketing is psychology. That's what interests you the most. I mean, yeah, the, the way I got into this was actually from going to garage sales and and uh, selling things that I didn't want on eBay and then eventually uh, doing some retail and wholesale arbitrage and sending FBA stuff in and, and then just kind of escalated from there. And uh, how did you get into that initial, you know, eBay-based selling I've been doing that since I had an eBay account. I'm 18, selling magic cards. And and your uh, interest was making money, or just because you that was the whole idea? Yeah, just side side income. Um, also, it fed the collecting. I'll find things that I know are worth money um, that I could sell that I don't want to collect. Right? Is it your interest in these things? that that you collect but you don't necessarily want to collect but you want to be able to be around them and handle them and then make money in on on the side or is it money first and then also you know this being the perks of it which one is it it's just a hobby and like i said um for for a while i did it full time um it was my full time income for a couple of years uh in, in addition to like doing some amazon consulting but um I really went hard those 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 couple of years so I can you know kind of go around to a thrift store or garage sale and you know I'll see an old game that I know sells on eBay for two you know 150 bucks or whatever and it's three dollars then I'm gonna pick it up I don't want the game but why not take that free money <laughs> right so gr growing up as a kid were you always interested in these things or it developed later? So in elementary school, I, um, okay. I was always, I was always, I mean, it was a good kid, got great grades, never got in trouble or anything like that. But, uh, in elementary school, I did get in trouble for, um, selling X-Men cards, um, and bartering. <laughs> and when the, uh, when my mom had to come pick me up, uh, from school, this was sixth grade. Um, I, uh, what I was, what I was doing was I was buying packs of cards at the grocery store and then, um, selling the singles to my friends, their favorite X-Men or whatever. And then I'd use that money to go buy more packs at the store and then keep doing it. And so when, the, when my mom walked in, the principal had like a wad of ones and fives on the table. <laughs> They they thought I was selling drugs or something, but it, it was X Men cards. <laughs> so, but I mean, that was not good for you to be selling X Men cards. I it was I guess against the school policy oh. or something. And how um, old were you? Six years? You said six years old. Sixth grade, so uh, I guess that would be like 12, 13 years old. Oh. In junior high, I used to go to Costco and buy the bulk candy, and then sell the singles. Uh, and uh you know to people they they would just say oh jason you got any snickers bars and i'd have like a backpack with an ice pack in it so <laughs> so uh how was it the, so back to the sixth grade uh, was it the money or was it just being able to do something and and the the actual trade what was it that interested you i guess the churn i don't know again growth i didn't really like it's not like i needed i didn't like need money or anything um so but, maybe because it was you were you became popular when you started doing this yeah so yeah i i i was uh, i was always pretty popular so different reasons so, but <laughs> do you think that that was the reason for you like that you suddenly it's, it's just my personality i'm super social um i for some reason, my entire life, I'll show up into a random group of people I never met before or whatever. And a week later, after hanging out with them, they're like, you know, you, Jason, what do you want to do? Like, <laughs> are you one of those people who walks into a 
uh, a networking room or whatever, a meeting room, uh, people are talking to each other. And in a few minutes, it's like you, you know everybody. That's 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 your attitude. That's that. Are you one of those people? Yeah, really? I'm. I, I'm. I'm a mixer for sure. Um, I'm the I'm the guy that walks into a room of strange people and uh, is singing karaoke ten minutes later. So. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what. Uh, so that's interesting. So you you you. I guess you realize that that very early age, and then your way of doing that was selling you this x-men cards <laughs> that was fun yeah well well that's great so jason um uh, tell us how can people reach you share your contact information yeah so um again uh, i'm the senior contractor here at my amazon guy uh we are myamazonguy.com we're a full service agency um as well as um mag school which is education as well as um our youtube channel my Amazon guy uh, that uh, helps uh, all sellers for um, uh, we have live Q and A's on Tuesdays and Fridays where you can answer any question and we'll answer it. Um, but yeah, that's how you can find me. <laughs> great. Thank you, Jason. It's a great conversation. And uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate it, Nick. We'll, we'll talk soon. Yes. And this brings us to the end of another episode and I'll see you on the next one. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the episode, and share it with someone you think would benefit from it too.